Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can uh, make a parametric building based on a rectangular or four-sided edge uh, boundary. As you can see here, I can change the side I want to offset. So we're going to talk about the algorithm which is going to make this final result. Uh, there is an extension which we can change. And produce different results like this. Uh, there is a count so we can control the number of floors we have. Uh, I can make this a little bit bigger as you can see here. Uh, the thickness I can decrease that and as you can see here the thickness of the floor and the roof which is combined which I'm going to explain in this algorithm is going to be changed. Uh, we have a resolution for the windows just for visualization and also the distance which is like the offset of the windows and that's the algorithm you can use easily to design this parametric building. Okay, let's take a look at the algorithm and how it works. Uh, okay, first let's just turn off everything and go step by step. Uh, at the first step, as you can see here, we can uh, define a series of four points and make a polyline. So this is going to be a polyline, a closed polyline, or you can just give a closed uh, four-sided polyline. Uh, to this curve and give it to the explode input. Uh, what's going to happen here is that it's going to explode it into four segments. Uh, if you have seen the free tutorial, you, can, you have uh, learned how to divide them into two edges. As you can see here, uh, we have these two edge or this one. We can flip between them by using a switch of weave. And here you can see that by hitting this true false, we can switch between these two lines. Uh, we can extend that here and uh, select the start and the end, the end points, connect them with a line and just connect that to uh, the main lines and make this surface. Let's just connect a surface to this so you can see the final result. Uh, this is going to be the extend. We can even make this negative if we want to go inwards. Uh, just double click this and make this minus 10. And the extension is going to go inwards. Okay. Uh, as we extend that, we can also make another one in the second direction. And let me just connect the surface to this see it here which is going to be in the opposite direction so instead of extending this one uh, from the start till the end and extending this much we're going to extend it from this direction okay uh, the reason we are doing this is that because we want to make two consecutive uh, floor plans so it's going to be parametric uh, after producing this uh, what I have done here is made a linear array uh, of the first floor plan and another linear array from the second one. As you can see here, uh, whatever number we have, we have divided this into two and just a movement, a simple movement for the array. Uh, uh, now that we have defined these uh, linear arrays, we extrude them up. So let's just turn on the extrusion. Uh, we have them like here. Uh, if I just change this, extension you can see that it's going to make it like this. Uh, so remember that uh, this extension has been uh, used uh, for the extension at the end of the curve and the start of the curve to make these two planar uh, closed curves. Okay after uh, extruding that we have to weave them so they get into one group and then we can select uh, based on the number we need here. So for example, if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, it's going to give you six outputs uh, from the list item. So here you can see that. But whatever, uh, maybe we put that to seven uh, because this is going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to just filter that out and only give you seven outputs. So that is why we have used the list item in ser series. Uh, after producing the uh, B reps, uh, we have to uh, thicken the floors. Uh, the algorithm is not really that complicated. I just wanted to explain that we get the top uh, and the floor uh, and extrude them in uh, inwards. So for example, if we look at the solid from here, uh, what we're going to do is extrude the floor upwards to make it like this. 
and extrude the rooftop towards inwards and then just make a solid difference from the facade so that's why I have made them into two groups uh, the extrusion for the uh, roof and the floor and then a solid difference from the facade so which is going to be the sandwich between the top and the bottom and uh, just fixing some errors and getting the roof facade and floor so for example if I bake this roof into layer one the facade into layer two and the floor into layer three you can see it's completely uh, different I can just bring that a bit so you can see it so it's completely different uh, okay after producing that I've also added an additional uh, solid union between the floors and the roof so for example you can see here these two set of solids are going to be joined together and uh, the merge faces is going to delete extra edges we have here and that's uh, how we produce these uh, joined solids okay so that is also another step for the windows and the frames we extract the facade which was this one and then we divide it into a C we have to rebuild it obviously uh, delete the top and the bottom by using this dot product and this patch so we get only the facade like this then we also loft it to make the surface right and at the end we use the mesh surface to divide it uh, I've used this uh, dimension and division to give it a resolution so we can divide that into a series of controllable windows as you can see here you can increase this resolution easily and you can see it here then we have used the Viverbird uh, frame and window just some joining thickness and here we go we have the frame and the windows we just turn off everything and we have this roof combined I think that this is the custom preview for that and that's it that's how we can make the final results uh, I hope this algorithm is useful if you have any question just ask below and thanks for watching see you next time bye